Are we on? Happy Sunday supper, supper Sunday. Oh yeah. Today is Sunday and it's time for supper. <laughs> so we are we are ready to go. Um, welcome everybody. My name is Robbie G. I'm here with Nate Gibson, Chef Nate Gibson, our resident chef, and today we will be making pizza. Oh yeah. And uh, so Nate's gonna walk us through everything. I wanna um, just welcome everybody, let you know that um, you can uh, obviously uh, write questions, comments. Gina is manning that in the background. If you have anything, you just have to sign in to your YouTube account and, uh, and we'll respond to those questions as we go. Um, everybody should have a little cheese plate for your Sunday supper. This is to enjoy while we watch Nate cook. And maybe you're cooking at home. I know some of you are, Jason. <laughs> um, but I want to give you a little rundown of these cheeses. Well, there's three of them on the plate. And I believe Nate is also going to be using these uh, in, on the pizzas. So um, this will be a good chance for you to try them uh, as is, and then you'll try them cooked on the, on the pies. The first one is the Quadrello di Bufala, and it looks like this. It's got a crusty rind on it. This is a really fun one. It is buffalo milk. So we don't always have buffalo milk cheeses. Most buffalo milk cheeses that we carry are mozzarellas. So very fitting for pizza. Right. This one is a little bit aged, uh, hence the rind. Uh, and it's kind of in the style of a taleggio, which is another famous Italian cheese that's made with cow's milk. This is made with, it's the same style made with buffalo milk. The second cheese is called Moliterno. And my piece just broke, but it's this, and it, it, it's supposed to be a triangle. And it's got um, little flecks of black in it, and that's truffle. So this is a Pecorino from Sardinia, and I can't wait to see what we're gonna you do with this. <laughs> I yeah. bet you do. And, uh, and then the, the last one is called bread cheese. And this is one that I've actually never had, just kind of raw, uncooked this like this. This guy's tasty. <laughs> is it? Okay. Yeah. So this one is from Wisconsin. It's cow's milk, and it's a, it's a cheese that you grill. So some of you may be more familiar with the cheese called halloumi, which is from Greece, uh, which you put on the grill, summertime cheese, uh, and it, it um, has a really interesting texture where it doesn't fall through the cracks or it can, you can grill it and it gets to be really delicious. Um, so this is just a, a domestic or Wisconsin version of that. So um, should I try this just as is? Yeah, take a little nibble. Interesting. Yeah. That's oh, good. I mean, yeah. I just had never had it uncooked before. Un it it's it's a, it almost has that little like slight caramelization to it, which mm -hmm. is nice. It's got a little like looks like it's already been sautéed or something yeah, on the toasted. outside of it, toasted. Anyway, delicious. And then there's some accoutrements, olives. These are uh, pepadus, which are really delicious and beautiful color. And then these are uh, what are these? Those are the piperos, I believe. Pip piperos? Yeah, called? they're from Spain. They're nice little spicy peppers. They're like the equivalent of like almost like a banana pepper. Oh, wow. Not too spicy, but just that perfect amount. They're nice and pickled. Yeah, it's very acidic. Actually, yeah. that's going to be really good with the cheese. Mm. All right. And Delish. The, yeah, the only other thing we put in there was a little bit of homemade hot honey. So this is actually orange blossom honey that has a little bit of chili flake that we made. So we you dip a little bit, but save some of that because you're gonna put it on one of the pies. Ooh. Yeah. Did you know that pizza, the word pizza, is Italian for pie? <laughs> you don't say. <laughs> <laughs> that's my that's my big you know, that's my big lesson yeah. for, for this evening. <laughs> welcome everybody. We're gonna chat it up. I will get to all of your questions and I'll tell you what, I'm hungry. Hey. <laughs> You know what? The great thing about pizza is it, uh, it's everyone's favorite. It sure it's is. It's hard to find someone who doesn't like it. Did, um, did you know on any given day, 13% of the population eats pizza? That's extraordinary. Isn't that awesome? <laughs> that's fantastic. Any Just, given day, there's a 13% chance I'm going to eat pizza. <laughs> well, there probably are people who eat pizza every single day. Oh, absolutely. I think I know people like that. Yeah. Do you remember the... Um, the documentary Super Size Me uh, about absolutely. like, like yes. <laughs> McDonald's. Yes. There was a guy who ate a Big Mac every single day of his life. Yeah. There's probably oh, yeah. Like, he came in and he, and he actually was not that overweight, which no. was. Well, I think he also him. used to walk there, which oh, was a good, a good That's a good yeah. I think he also had a mullet, but. <laughs> hey, go in style. 
Um, all right, so we're gonna talk about what's in your kits real quick. That way, that way you make sure you have everything. So in your kits, first thing we're gonna talk about, you're gonna have your flour, you have a little container of yeast. You're also gonna have uh, a little bit of tomato sauce, some mozzarella. We have two different styles of mushrooms. So these are the okra shiitakes, and then we have the cremini. So pretty much if anyone has taken any of these classes before, these are the two we usually use. Okra shiitakes just have a really great meaty flavor. Um, you'll also have the bread cheese, another piece of it, another piece of the quadrilla de bufala, another piece of the moliterno, some uh, green pitted gourd olives, some really nice mixed uh, cherry and uh, sun gold tomatoes, some fresh arugula, lemon, basil, and then green onions. I know it sounds like a lot, but it all makes sense. How many pies are we making today? So we're going to show how to make three different pies. Ooh, I know. Oh, I know. Uh, <laughs> so the first thing I'm actually, before we even start on anything, we're going to talk about real quick baking your pizza. Just because you want to get your oven nice and hot before we start doing this. Um, believe it or not, at your house, you don't have a commercial Pizza, believe it or not. <laughs> Some people might. So if you do, that is awesome. Um, as to the rest of us, we don't. So the, uh, the options for you for cooking at home, one of the greatest ones is this pizza stone. So you've probably heard of this a million times. These are fantastic. So what this does is I already have the oven. I, I, pre I preheat my oven to as high as it will go. So, that's the first thing you want to do. Just go, this one's 475. Crank the dial up. Don't put it on broil, but crank the dial up. And then this, you're going to put in ahead of time. The reason you put this in ahead of time is that way you use one of these, which is a pizza peel, and you slide this on top. So that way you don't have to use a pan. You don't have to make your pizza in a pan. You just slide it just like they do at a pizza place. So this is how you get that nice, crusty bottom on it. What, do you, what is the temp at the, like with the, the local uh, places that have the big oven? A thousand degrees. Like oh, literally, so it's like, yeah. there's no way you can get a pizza that hot. Or your oven that hot. So we got that going. We're going to put this in. And then a lot of people will see these guys. So these are pans that have holes in them. The reason they have holes is so that way that lets uh, steam escape. Because when the steam doesn't escape, that's when you get like soggy bottom pizza. That's always you know you went to someone's house and someone's parents made pizza and it was like <laughs> the dough is this thick and everything. These help uh, prevent that really gross sogginess. I would never cook for you. I'd be oh, no. too self-conscious. <laughs> oh no, trust me, the story of my life. It's the worst. I go to anyone's house or even like when I'm dating people, no one wants to cook for me. And I'm like, all oh, that's all I want. I'm like, yeah. I just am so sick of making food for myself that I, I'll take anything. <laughs> I mean I've been the cheese guy. I mean oh, you, yeah, you're yeah. probably expected to bring cheese to every party. Every too. single one. Yeah. <laughs> Believe it or not, guys, we have to pay for it too. Like. <laughs> uh, all right. So we're gonna first start by making some dough. So you do have pre-made dough, but we're gonna make some, and probably by the time that we're ready to put some of the pizzas together, we'll have enough, their dough will be ready to go to, to go to the next step. So all I have is, right here, I have warm water, so I have a cup of warm water. You don't want it too hot, you don't want it too cold. The reason why you're trying to activate this yeast, if it's too hot, you'll kill the yeast. If it's too cold, it won't activate. It'll take forever. Um, it sounds, I don't know, weird, but the best way to tell exactly how hot it is, is the first temperature, is run your finger under the water. If you kind of have to go pee right afterwards, <laughs> it's the perfect temperature. Um, That's an old slumber party trick. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you make no friends at the slumber party. All right, so I'm putting that warm water right in there, or then I'm gonna put Rob's hand in there. Um, <laughs> And then we're gonna take our yeast and we're just gonna sprinkle the yeast right on top. 
And then this is we're about to do this thing called blooming the yeast. So what this is going to do, the yeast, and we're using for this um, instant yeast. Some people use fresh yeast. For this, instant yeast is great. Um, I actually prefer buying them in jars, and I'll tell you why. It is a pain in the butt to have all those little packets not fully used, like half used. You do this, you can measure it out, you can, you, and then you have a jar afterwards. I don't know, I think they just work far better. Do they go bad? I mean, is, it, is there a date on them? Uh, there is a date, but it's, it usually takes a long time for those to go bad. Um, so we're just gonna leave this in here. And in this, we're gonna start talking a little bit about flour. So through my pizza research, a lot of people have different varieties of flour they like to use. Some people, oh, I only use all-purpose flour. Some people, oh, I only use bread flour. Other people, I, I use, only use double zero flour. Mm -hmm. So double zero is like an extra fine semolina. So with all that considered, my, my move was I'm going to take half all-purpose, half bread flour. That way we're going to have a nice... A little bit of chew, a little bit of crispiness. The, the, the thing you want with the bread flour is you want to get that chewy kind of dough. Like, there's nothing about pizza that's more enjoyable than when it gets to the crust and it's just like that perfect little mm. like little treat at the end. I don't know. There's some people don't eat crust and I, I don't know. What's I don't like to look at them in the eyes, but <laughs> it's fine. More, Never snacks, trust. Never more trust. snacks for this guy. Yeah. <laughs> Real quick, Nate, for yeah. my friend Lynn, folks. Hello, Lynn. Hey, Lynn. Um, if you don't have any of the like stone or that little other pan, what option could we do right now? What option? Just get your um, get your oven hot. Just get your oven to 475 or 475 or wherever high will go. And what we're gonna do for you, I'll show you later on. But you're gonna like par bake your pizza dough. We I joked around with Gene. We call it bubbly style. Just cause. It's gonna be impossible for you to melt everything, get everything ready to go, and have an actual, like, really crispy dough if you're trying to do it all with the raw dough. So it actually works out better if you stretch, when I show you, I'll show you how to stretch the dough. You put it down on a cookie sheet or a baking sheet, toss in the oven, just so that way, like, it'll start to get a little bit firm. You don't want it to puff up or anything like that. You just want it to start forming a shape and then you can sauce it and then put it back in to finish and it will actually get nice and crispy. So she or, and any, or anyone else should get a cookie sheet ready, handy. Yeah, get it handy. Um, all right, so yeah, so with the, with the, um, the flour, it's, for me that's like the biggest thing. You wanna make sure you're working the dough and like we, you talk about all the different styles of pizza dough too, like you have Detroit style, Chicago style, you have the deep dish, you have this and that. They all are di different styles, different variants, and with those, there's gonna be different ratios of, oh, I use this amount of this flour, this amount of this flour. I think this is a great middle ground. It's gonna be less temperamental than using all bread flour, and it's gonna be more flavorful than using all all-purpose flour. All right, so, if we can see here real quick, I'll bring this closer to you. See how the yeast is starting to come up to the top? That's what we're talking about blooming. It means it's just starting to like let itself go a little bit, warm up, it's getting hungry, it wants to eat. So this is where I was telling Gina, Colorado pizza, this is where the hot honey comes from. So Colorado pizza, this, I, I dated someone from Colorado, all about dipping the crust in honey. I did not know anything about Colorado pizza. Trust me, I, I am a pizza <laughs> connoisseur and I know too much about weird pizza things. <laughs> but the reason that they used honey was right here, you could add a little pinch of honey because yeast wants sugar to eat. So they would use honey and they're like, all right, we have honey left over. Stow's already sweet a little bit, like, let's just keep dipping. Wow. Yeah. So, now we're going to add our flour, and we're just going to add, I'm going to add about half of this right now. 
And you don't want to add everything right away because just in case, oh no, like I don't, I don't have, I put, not even put enough water or something along those lines. You don't want to then be like, I'm kind of screwed and this is all messed up. Although you can just add a little bit of water to it. So we have a little bit of the flour and that's, this is where I'm going to add the salt. I'm going to add the salt to the flour. So salt kills yeast. So if you use salt directly to yeast, you will kill your yeast. So that way, this, that's what they always say in like bread making, add your salt to your flour because it disperses it more. So I'm just gonna move this around my hand. And if you have a KitchenAid, this is where you can put it in the kitchen, like KitchenAid with a dough hook and just start gradually adding everything in. And then we're gonna add a little more of the flour. So the dough we kind of want here is it's going to be a little bit softer than you think it should be, but it's not going to stick to your hand. It's going to be like lightly tacky, but it's just going to be, this is how you're going to get that nice airy, like airy texture and also that chew to it. So Ravi. Yes. What's your, uh, what was like the pizza you grew up with? Oh, they, so we're, growing up they, we would get like a slice of New York pizza. Uh, I don't yeah. think we had any, um, cause I, I grew up in the, in the Bay Area and we, and like my family wasn't, we weren't super adventurous. Like I didn't really try a lot of foods until I, I came just down to San Diego um, as, as a grown up. But we would get like a New York pizza usually um, but I, I mean, I think my, my preference is um, the Southern Italian, like the classic, you know, the really thin ones that they scorch uh, yeah. for a couple of minutes and you got to eat really quick. <laughs> yeah, um, absolutely. Until, or, you know, if you don't eat it within a couple of minutes, they get soggy, those yep. pizzas. Yeah. We, so we grew up actually with uh, a pizza place down the street called, it was called Anthony's. Shout out to those guys. Wait, is there a New England Pizza is this there is a New England pizza. It's called Bar Pie. Okay. But there's also like another new, like there's a couple New England styles. One's predominant one's Bar Pie. It sounds weird. And, all right, so right here, I'm just adding a little bit of the extra virgin olive oil. Uh, the reason we're gonna add extra virgin olive oil to the dough right here, fat in dough will make it flaky and crispy. Ooh, so, that's, a, that's a good tip there. I'm not adding a ton because I don't want it to be oily and like make it greasy. I just want it to, this is going to give it protein, give it shine, a little fat. And it's going to help it so it's not super sticky. I cut you off. You were going to talk about Anthony's. Uh, Anthony's was a Greek style. So Greek style pizza, if you've never had it, what a treat that is really. Super crispy crust. They use like a lot of like olive oil and then they use it kind of similar to like a Detroit or like a deep dish, but it's like, it's like this in between thin and thick crust, but the crust itself is cr so crunchy. Yeah. It's like a breadstick. Yeah. Well, so it was, it, I was doing a little research on pizza history. Yeah. And of course the Greeks were in Southern Italy, you know, a couple thousand years ago. And uh, flatbreads. I mean, really, yeah. pizza is just flatbread, and so there's a lot of like. Then the people aren't sure when it when it went from just flatbread with toppings to pizza. Exactly. You know, and so it's sort of like changed or um, evolved over the years. Yeah. And um, of course, you know, after the Colombian exchange, when they finally got tomatoes, that's when it really became like what recognizable. Yeah. At, you know, as, as what we think of it today. Yeah. No, I 100% I agree with you. They, but is the Greek style, like, is it like a crunchy flatbread, basically? It's like a thick, almost like a thick, crunchy, pretty cheesy kind of pie. Yeah. Um, no, the bar pie is like, this is something you only hear about in history books. Like, it's just <laughs> like the grimy bars, you like, whatever, we grew up on that, it's... They bake them in like these cast iron pans that may have been cleaned twice ever. <laughs> so they all have like just greased up uh -huh. from scent for years of grease. Sounds good. And <laughs> <laughs> delicious. And then they use um, the big thing is they use like American a mixture of like cheddar and American cheese. Uh -huh. 
it sounds disgusting, but it like gives it this very distinct taste, and it it creates like a burnt edge around it, like a burnt cheese edge. Mm. Is there any place anywhere in San Diego where you can find a no. New England pie? No. No, they don't make them. I thought Tribute Pizza was doing something like Tribute that. Pizza. Great guys. Mm. They make fun, really interesting, cool pizzas that I I'm a big fan. They're my like. If I'm gonna go out and get a fancy pie, I'll go. I'll go hang out with those guys. And they usually do like a half, like a. I think it's like two month. I don't know if they still. Well, with COVID, I doubt they still do it. But they were doing like a half price bottle of wine night. Ooh. Yeah, nice little date spot. <laughs> uh, don't tell everyone though, because that's like been a first date spot a couple of times. <laughs> um, all right. So dough. As you can see, I've just been kneading this dough. And it's coming together really nice and beautifully in a circle. So see how this is kind of spreading apart a little bit? All I want to do is I'm going to take my hands and I'm kind of, see how I'm kind of pinching? I'm going to pinch it and roll it at the same time. And what this is doing is it's going to seal the bottom of the dough. So it's just the more I do it, the tighter this dough is getting. So you have this nice, perfect round sealed on the bottom. So I'm going to transfer this into another bowl. So from here, drizzle a little bit of oil down. Is that for texture again? Um, no, this is actually, so it's, this is going to make it so it will grow. So it's one letting it so it can like kind of slide up the sides of this. Mm. And at the same time, it prevents it from uh, creating a skin. So, Interesting. Well, it's kind of, they, they do that on uh, cheese rinds too. They'll, they'll rub yeah. it with oil <clears throat> to help coat it. And then from here, we're just gonna cover it. And you just wanna put it in a warm place. So right now, this guy is on. We're just gonna leave it right here. And then from here, it's just gonna start doubling in size. Um, all right, now we can uh, we can talk so talk topics. Um, Rob, what's your favorite topping? What's what's the go-to Robbie order? Oh gosh, I'm a big onion guy. Ooh, I'm a big garlic guy. All right, um, not when I was dating. <laughs> <laughs> I like. Uh, um, I'm a big cheese guy. Yeah. Um, I do like you know some of the tr traditional stuff like a mozzarella. Yeah. Um, Provolone, that kind of thing. Uh, God, I mean, I actually really like uh, white pies. I like chicken on, on my pie. Ooh. See, I'm like, I love going for the adventurous ones, but like if I was, like, put me in a corner, mm -hmm. pepperoni pizza every day. Yeah. I, it's the simple. That's usually what I go for. I usually go for pepperoni, pepperoni sausage, oh, just yeah. like the, the regular, the, meat, yeah. the, the, the classic stuff, All I right. would say. So we're gonna let our dough proof. It's gonna take about, I'd say 30 minutes in a warm place and it's gonna double in size. And that's gonna be the first step of it. Um, so while we're waiting for that, we're gonna start talking about toppings. So in here, I kinda of set this up where you can go a couple different ways with me on this. You can follow the path. And I have like three different pies kind of set up for you. Or you can completely go rogue and I don't blame you. <laughs> you have all these different uh, choices in front of you and we can just go from there. Oh yeah, bust out anything that's been in, that's yeah. in your fridge that you haven't figured out what to do with. Yeah. <laughs> and let's see if we can find a fridge <laughs> for it. <laughs> yeah, I've heard of Big Mac pizzas, I've heard of nacho uh -huh. pizzas. Some restaurant just recently did a, what did they do, a bangers and mash pizza, or like a <laughs> pie pizza, yeah. So I'm mean, just gonna cut the mushrooms first. So the okra shiitakes, again, probably one of the most versatile, underutilized mushrooms. They have great texture, great flavor, and the best part about them is uh, they're not very expensive, and they just are delicious. So I'm just gonna cut these into little strips, and I'm gonna put them on rock because they're not gonna take all that long to cook. Mm. And if anything, mushrooms on pizza, fam, like a, a really great idea because 
I think we learned this from the, whoever took the wellness in class. Mushrooms are sponges. Mm -hmm. So if there's too much moisture on the pizza, this is just going to absorb it. So it's going to actually it's going to help you out, keeping the uh, pizza from being soggy. Um, can you cook out flavor in mushrooms? Like, is because you know for some some truffles, you're not supposed to cook with them because yeah. The so certain mushroom, like yeah, a truffle, you never like you don't really want to cook them. It's always like a finishing mushroom. Right. So that and that's just because one, they they are so expensive, but two. You're just cooking in all like the flavor of them. So anytime you usually cook with truffles or something along those lines, it's always like a topping. A su or, a, yeah, like to finish it right over. The I mean, top. finishing. That's a better yeah, word. Yeah, yeah. When you cook, when you cook with it, that's when a lot of people use like they'll use truffle salt or they'll use like the bits at the um, end. Um, we used to what we used to do is we used to take truffles and we when we stored them, we'd store them in. Uh, uh, Boreo rice, mm -hmm. so that way when we were done doing certain truffles, that all the rice tasted like truffle. That's awesome. And we made risotto and then used one of the bits at the end yeah. and put it in there. Um, all right, so I'm just gonna cut. I'm gonna cut the other cremini. Put that there, and then same thing like olives. I'm just gonna slice these up. That way, just getting prepared so when we roll out our dough, we'll be ready to, ready to rock and roll. Um, I also made you guys some tomato sauce. So, I don't know about you, but like, tomato sauce to me, I don't necessarily think I need, like, you don't need to cook it every time. I didn't cook this tomato sauce for the pure fact it's going on pizza and it's getting cooked again. So, if I'm gonna make Tomato, if I'm making pasta, yeah, I'm gonna cook my sauce because I'm just finishing the pasta with the sauce. For this, it's gonna, it's gonna cook itself. So when I do this, I usually like to do is like if you get whole tomatoes, like whole roasted tomatoes, drain all the liquid out of them. So drain it out and then take those tomatoes and you can either just put it in a Roboku or like a food processor and just pulse it so it's nice and chunky. And prior to that, throw in some garlic, throw in some onions in that uh, food processor. So that way, those are really small. Add your tomatoes, dried uh, seasonings, mm -hmm. and you're good to go. Um, so that's what this sauce is really simple. It's garlic, onions, fennel seed. Oh, uh, I forgot to say fennel before when you asked about toppings. Oh, nice. Yeah, chili flake. Uh, what else do we eat? Some salt and some <laughs> some black or some uh, some garlic as well, but yeah, just keep it simple because for me it's all about kind of everything else, and especially with these cheeses, it's kind of all about the cheese. Uh, the reason we chose Quadrello, as Rob was saying, pretty classic is buffalo milk mozzarella. Yeah, I love buffalo milk cheese. I don't know about it. if you feel There's, the same way. I do because they're so high in fat. I mean yes. buffalo don't produce as much milk as the other animals, but you get a good yield of cheese because they're so high in fat. That's a good thing in cheese. Absolutely, and especially with the pizza we're gonna make with this, this is that cheese is potentially gonna be our sauce. Ooh. Yeah, so. And it's a good melter too. Like you yeah. can even like, you can tell by the, by the texture even beforehand, and it's like that smooth texture means it's gonna be a good melter. Yeah, and then, for the salami, you got the calabrese. The calabrese is actually from um, Cristiano Cremonelli. Oh, nice. Cremonelli is in uh, Utah. Uh, I actually got to meet him. Super nice guy. Like fourth or fifth generation salumi maker. Mm -hmm. But the great thing about them, they only use salt. Like, they don't use any other chemicals or anything with their salamis. And you should, the calabrese, it just is named for the region of Calabria. Yeah. Which is in the south, which is right next to... Uh, Campania, which is where all those buffalo farms are, mm -hmm. where they make the mozzarella. So, like Campania, which is also where the town of Naples is, or yeah. city of Naples, that's the home of pizza. That's where it all started. That's the birthplace. But it's also where they have 800 to 1,000 bu water buffalo farms. Wow. And so, anything that's labeled mozzarella di bufala must come from that region in order to have the DOP stamp on the, mm -hmm. on the label. And uh, so, that's so this one comes from Lombardy in the north, 
Uh, but it's not a mozzarella. The yeah. similarity is that it's buffalo milk. Uh, speaking of DOP, mm-hmm. did you know that <laughs> I don't uh, know. Neapolitan Pizza now has that decree in Italy? Really? It is protected now. Um, there's certain guidelines it has to follow. In 2009, upon Italy's request, Neapolitan Pizza was safeguarded in the EU as a traditional specialty guaranteed dish. No, I didn't know that, Nate. Yeah, fun fact. <laughs> Read about it in a book. Uh, yeah, so, but it's like, I was reading the like subcategories of it. It's like, it has to be like 35 centimeter, or yeah. centimeters long. It can only be made by hand, so no machines can help make it. It only can be certain cheeses, only certain blends of flour. Like, they take it seriously. And why not? Yeah, they do it right, and they take it seriously. Um, all right, so the vision for our pies today, and I say pie because I'm just from the East Coast and I'm weird, um, with our bread cheese right here. So in my eyes, this bread cheese, because the biggest thing that's become all the rage right now is Detroit-style pizza. And wait, what? can you just really quickly, Yeah. what's different about Detroit pizza? The okay. shape of it? A lot, of, a lot of things. <laughs> Shape of it for one. We actually, Gina and I t- did our research on this before you got here. They used to use old, um, like manifold trays, and that's what they used to bake these pizzas in from all the guys from the assembly lines oh. at all the car yeah. um, factories. And it's a baked pizza. It's not deep dish. That's the big thing. It's not deep dish pizza. It's pretty much baking regular pizza, so it's nice and fluffy, and they use brick cheese. That's right. So that's it. They use Wisconsin brick cheese, tomato sauce, and then pretty much they always do pepperoni. That's like the go like go to topping. But it's always in a rectangle. It's in a rectangle, rectangle pan. Right? Yeah. So it's like crispy on the bottom, crispy on the outside. They're actually, I think they just opened a Detroit style pizza place in San Diego. Yeah. Um, so this is kind of our tribute to, do, to those guys. Let me um, tell everyone what brick cheese is really quick. Yes. Brick cheese is, a, it's a cheese that is, um, it originates in Wisconsin. It's a total American original. And it's really a hybrid because they protect, as we were just talking about, they protect a lot of these old world products, cheese, wine, you know, other things, meats, butters. Um, and so in the, in the United States, we don't have all of those rules and regulations, so we can create new cheeses. And, and like in a place such as Wisconsin, we, there was a lot of German settlers and there's a lot of English settlers. And so they brought the, the types of cheeses that they made back home. Germans made a cheese called Limburger. Mm-hmm. Uh, English made a cheese called Cheddar. Um, brick cheese is really a blend of cheddar and Limburger. So it's, a, it's an American original hybrid, oh, yeah. and they used to press the cheese. In fact, Gina and I were there one, a few years ago. We, they, we had the whole staff out there, but they showed us. They actually press the cheese by putting bricks on top of it oh. to, as a weight. This to, makes to sense. Press the <laughs> yeah, and it even looks like the shape of oh, a brick, yeah. which I wasn't sure what the name came from, but it was, there's actual yeah, bricks. these are bricks, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but is there a question? Yes, Chef, yeah. uh, our good friend Carol. Um, will you let us know, the people that don't have a special pan, when to put the crust in? Like how, yeah. when they should put it in? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Um, absolutely, yeah. So what we're going to do is use this uh, cheese in place of this brick cheese. Uh, and then we're going to do like, I always like to call it like the... The supreme pizza, if mm-hmm. you will. So we're gonna do <laughs> like a round table supreme. One hundred percent. So we have. I'm gonna use a couple of these cremini mushrooms. We're gonna use some of these olives. We're gonna use that calabrese, and we're gonna use this brick cheese, and maybe a little drizzle of hot honey afterwards. Hey yo. Um, so I'm just gonna just take a little grater. You can go two ways with this. If you want, you can use this side. This flat side, just be careful. So we can use that, and all that's gonna do is just create these nice strips. So because we're gonna cook this in like pretty quickly, 
This will help like spread it out a little bit more. Um, also, it's going to make it so it co like covers more surface area. So we're going to do this. So the yeah, as Robbie was saying about the history of pizza, the big thing that I kept reading and you probably did too is um, it's like it's kind of like with any food like this is terrible thing about war but also the great thing about war is these soldiers come back after going to these other countries tasting all this food and they try to bring it back and replicate it so that's like the big thing that was happening with pizza like all these soldiers were in Italy and everything like that and they're like uh, how do we do this mm -hmm. and how do we make this great and that's why a lot of the funny thing is a lot of like the chain pizza places uh, like Pizza Hut Domino's are all from the Midwest mm -hmm. Which is like, no ships could really sail there. <laughs> so it's not like the old world was there. Well, they used to uh, in the you know the 19th century. They did, when pizza started booming in, in Italy, they would build these pizza ovens just you know on the street basically in, in Naples, and people would it was street food. Yeah. So people would would get their pie, they would fold it into a newspaper, and they would just walk down the street with it, and it was just simple. Uh, I mean, it was it was food for everybody, food for the masses. And uh, for those who, who um, like history, you know that yeah. the United States came up um, in World War II through the South. And in fact, a lot of those buffalo farms went, went away. Um, they had to replenish uh, the animals after the war because um, they come from the Far East. By the way, no one in Italy could ever tell me like, where, like, how that all came about, like how the animals got there. But they, they came back after the war. But all of the American soldiers that came back to the United States... Were, um, were, were fiending for, for pizza when they came yeah. back. And that's when the boom happened after World War II. Yeah, and it's, hey, thank you. <laughs> thank I, you so much. So, <laughs> so sorry and thank, thank you, you for the your same service time. and thank, thank you for your pizza. Uh, all right, so we got kind of most of these things set up. Our next big move is we're gonna start, uh, we're gonna start rolling out our dough. So you guys all got pre-made dough. So the thing with this is we can either, you can either take this and make two nice smaller Neapolitan pizzas, or we can do this and do one big pizza. So we're gonna do two small ones. We're actually, you know what, we're gonna turn this into one big guy because I actually brought some more dough with me. Um, that way by the time we're done with this, we got one pizza round down, your dough will be ready to go for the next round. So. When this doubles, as it did right here, so this is my big Tupperware, just like that, what you want to do is you just want to push this down a little bit. What you're doing, so what's, what's happening is the yeast is coming up, it's actually fermenting the dough, and what that means it's just eating all the sugars that are in the dough, that are coming from the flour, and then when it does that, it, that's why it puffs up. It's all the gas from doing that. So we're just gonna push it down a little bit. Um, and then, so that's the first, first form of us fermenting our dough. So the second step, and I wrote this on your guys' sheet, this is where we're gonna decide when we're gonna eat. So from here, we can roll this into two different doughs, wait 15 minutes, and we're ready to roll out dinner tonight. What a lot of those pizza places do, they let their dough wait a day or two. The reason why they want to do that is they want to eat, one, eat all the things that are actually not great for your tummy when it comes to like the gluten and the flour. And at the same time, it creates all this flavor from all the sugars it's eating and it's dispersing back in there. So it's actually not a bad idea to make your dough like this form it into your balls of dough like this and toss it in your fridge. That way it will slowly start proofing again and it takes longer and longer because it's so cold. It's like same with like the way, the way cheese is made. Like the warmer it is, the quicker it's gonna ripen. This, same thing, it's nice and cold. It's gonna take a long time to get ready. Um, so we're just gonna take this. I'm just gonna literally cut this just like that, looks like a little bow tie. I'm gonna cut it right in half. 
All right, Robbie, you ready to step up to the yeah. plate? It's right. rock and roll. I'm going to move over to where you are real quick. Okay. Watch out for that conference call. Um, <laughs> all right. So what I want you to do is sprinkle a little of this flour down. Sprinkle flour down now. Oh, yeah. Okay. That's how I see them do it. All right. So you're going to take your dough uh -huh. and start folding it in on itself to create a ball. Okay. How am I doing? You're doing a great job. You have tender, nice tender fingers. I played shortstop. Oh, uh, I was going to take you more of a finger tap dancer, but <laughs> that one works too. So you're going to roll, keep rolling it on stuff to like, you want to create a ball. Okay. All right. So now we're going to flip that over and then on and on. You get too fancy. <laughs> Remember earlier, we're going to tuck this in like this and I want you to kind of just start rolling it around like a ball. Okay. Yeah, there you go. You don't have to yell at me, by the way. <laughs> well, I didn't, I, didn't, <laughs> I didn't bring my steam whistle, you know? <laughs> Jeez. Like, I didn't bring my steam whistle and my cattle prod. High school you know? gym class. <laughs> How is this? Well, you're going to be in the corner again? <laughs> <laughs> you make me run liners. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. So we're going to take that, okay. put this off to the side a little bit. All right, and you're ready for round two. Let's do it. So sprinkle a little more flour down. Okay. All right, you're just gonna do the same thing. So the reason we're doing this, this is we're just kind of shaping this that way. Our this is giving us a little chance for our pizza to definitely come out round. So, and when you're making bread, this is what you call the forming of your bread or like shaping. And the reason we want, yes, we do a round round dough. Oddly enough, we'll get a round shape. So I felt I heard a little pop in there. Like a that's the gas bubbles. Yeah. yeah, that's a good pop's good. All right, now flip it over, and then really give it that. Yeah, you want to roll it. Don't, don't be afraid now. You're not being too ginger. You're being a little too gentle with it. Yeah, cup your, move your palms in. And cup it like that. Oh, well, I see it. Coming yeah, up. there you go. And then just do it kind of in a circle. You're a good coach. You know what? <laughs> I try my best. My, my Bobby Knight. Try in honor doing of, a great Mark, job. In honor of Mark Bagley. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't worry. I won't throw a chair in here. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Perfect. How's that? Good? That's great. So what we're going to do is we're going to leave that just like this. And I'm just gonna cover that. So we're gonna we're gonna wait this like let that wait for like 10 to 15 minutes, just to go up by half. You're not gonna double it up again in size. You just want it to go up a little bit. So here's in your bag. This has already been happened. This has already happened for you. So we're gonna take this guy. And actually, let me move these right up here. So this is the good good. So we made this a couple days ago for you guys. Ooh. So what I'm this gonna do is what everybody is, got. This is what everyone got. I'm gonna put that right in there. And what should I do? I'm gonna show I'm gonna show you how to, how to properly roll one of these guys out. Mm -hmm. So funny enough, you don't want to use a rolling pin. Uh, reason behind that is you wanna stretch your dough. Again, pizza is all about texture. You don't want to have like this nothing kind of white bread flavor to it. You want this to have a chew, have texture, have crunch. So all I'm doing is I'm taking our dough, really pressing it into our flour a little bit. I don't want to completely deflate it, but all I'm trying to do is make sure this doesn't stick. So I'm going to take this, I'm going to put this down. So see how it's, we've created a circle without doing anything. Yeah. So from here, I'm going to take my fingers and I'm just going to push just like this and I'm going to start moving this around. And you can see all I'm doing, I was trying to write this down in your guys' sheets, but then like you, after, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I can't how do you like, describe this? yeah. Uh, so all I'm doing, this is me creating a crust. So I'm just pushing around this rim 
strictly to create a crust. So I'm gonna go around a couple of times, just really pinching it in. And this is the basis of our pizza. So you're gonna be like, all right, well I have this huge bubble in the middle. Mm -hmm. Hey, don't worry about it. I was this just is gonna great. ask you about that. This is great. It's supposed to be there? Okay. It's supposed to be here. It's here having a great time. I just wanna make sure that I get this ready to go. It looks like a, like a guy wearing a, a crown or something. <laughs> like, <laughs> it, looks, it looks like a big ravioli. Like, <laughs> Uh, which I'm not mad about either. Yeah. So now I'm gonna take my hand, I'm gonna push down, and I'm still gonna, and don't be afraid to put some flour down. Mm -hmm. You want it to be able to slide a little bit. So if it feels sticky, just more flour. Yeah, exactly. So I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna push down a little bit, I'm gonna flip this over, I'm gonna do the same thing. So I really wanna make sure that I'm showing that Crust. What if I wanted the stuffed crust? Like a cheesy stuff. Like a crust. cheesy stuff? Hey, I'm not gonna stop you. <laughs> more cheese more cheese Speaking the better. Of, I think it's Pizza Hut where I saw that. <laughs> well, I think everyone's doing it. No. Yeah. It's a new it's all the rage in Milan, you know? Yeah. Um big Super Bowl thing, I <laughs> So now <laughs> they have big suit they're they're really into American football in Milan, I think. Oh really? No. <laughs> <laughs> they like, like football. Yeah, football? Yeah. No, this is football. So all I'm doing is try, try to get this even. And I'm just gonna use my hand to kind of push it out. And I'm gonna use this hand to stretch it a little bit. So as you see, it's starting to kind of move up. And then I'm gonna flip it over, get the same thing going. So I'm using my palm, I'm using this hand, and I'm stretching still maintaining that crust and then from here this is where you can kind of put it on the back of your hand uh -huh. and all I'm doing because I left the biggest part right in the middle instead of using the biggest part on the sides now I'm just gonna use let gravity take its course and I'm just gonna use that and all I'm, like I'm literally just moving my hands back and forth mm. I'm letting this do its own thing. So can you toss it up at this point? How much you got? How much money you got in your pocket? If you, you can toss it up. You want, you want, you want to see this happen? All right. Sounds like a it's been a while. I'm just trying to make sure I have no hit the Oh, yeah, right? All right. So with the tossing of the pizza pie, uh, you, it's a flick of the wrist, really. So let's see. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, so this is actually even just <laughs> spreading the dough out evenly. What? Some of these guys can like really just there, there's a, actually Thanks. do you know if there's a fence for this? Is there they're like they're, they're, they're like it's almost like trick shots. They're like roll it down here. It's <laughs> amazing. <laughs> they'll like throw it back and forth in their hands. But yeah, it's just a literally just a flick of the wrist. You should be participating in these things. Uh, me? No. <laughs> Yeah, Scottish guy comes out and last. Uh, so, that's awesome. I'm just gonna keep spreading this out real quick because we want it nice and thin. You don't need this overly thick pie. So we're making a like a traditional yeah. type of uh, Southern yeah. Italian style. Yeah, so they're all gonna be this way, and we're just gonna vary the toppings a little bit. Mm -hmm. All right. So if I were making a flatbread, it's just the same. It's the same process, same type of basically same type of dough, or is there a um, tweak in it? For the most part, yeah. Because you want to get yeah the same thinness, everything like that. You just do a different shape. Mm. Some of those like depending on what kind of flat, like lavash, you want like paper thin. Other ones you can kind of just do it the same way. Um, all right, so right here we have our pizza peel. So when you're spreading your pizza dough out. You really want to put it on this peel right after you spread it. So the peel is what's going to be where you transfer the dough if you're using a stone onto the stone. So whoever asked the question of, oh, let us know when to put the pizza dough in the oven, now is your time. Yes. After That's she your... cleans Carol her ceiling, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> 
Did it stick to it? Yeah. <laughs> Did it come down? That means the pasta's done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It'd be, yeah, it'd be funny if she had like 10 things on the, on the seat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I knew I forgot that. Um, all right. And then the other move I'm going to do, it's just kind of a safety. So I'm just using a little bit of, this is just cornmeal. You have like semolina flour, you can use semolina flour. And this is making it so this will slide off. Uh -huh. If you don't feel confident that you put enough on, just wiggle. Oh, you're talking about that. Oh, God. oh no. I, <laughs> I brush my teeth and I wiggle, so it's fine. <laughs> so I think this one we're going to do our tribute to the Supreme style. Ooh. Actually, you know what? Take it all back. We're going to Quadrello. This one is going to be a lot of fun. You're going to put those, those thick slices on? So we're going to put Ooh. these thick slices on there. Exciting. Just like this. Did you take the paper off the rind, Nate? I, hope I did take the it. paper off the rind. Wait, which pieces do you want? I didn't take it off that one. <laughs> um, I'm going to add, because our pizza is a little bit bigger. I'm just going to cut a little more cheese. And I'm not going not to be mad at that. No. And I don't need to have this so it's 100% like... It's gonna spread. Doesn't need to be perfectly symmetrical. Doesn't need to be perfectly symmetrical. And then I took, I'm gonna take our mushrooms. Mm. So far, so good. So well, actually, I'm gonna go like that. <laughs> There's always one, folks. There's always <laughs> one. It's always wrong. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm gonna take these, and then we also got some green onions. Oh yes. So I'm just gonna take those. Oh, you don't need to pan over it. Don't worry. I'll be right back. <laughs> oh, but we must see the chef at work. All right. So I just cut these. I'm going to leave them big. So I'm going to leave them big like this. I want that charred flavor. Yeah, that's, a good, that's a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> see, that's an interesting choice. I like that. Yeah. You know, green onions, pizza. Uh, why not? Do you ever think about the, the color? Like, the, you know, the marguerite pizza was because it was the colors of the Italian flag? Yes. They made it. Oh, oh okay. I know everything wrong. Yeah. I know <laughs> Clearly. <laughs> no, that's a, great, that's a great point. No, I wasn't thinking of the color, but. I thought maybe you were thinking that on the cheese plates because you had the red, the green, and the, the white cheese. I feel like it's only natural. Like, yeah. without doing it, you, you make the cheese plate and it ends up being the Italian flag. Right. <laughs> All right. We got this right now. I'm going to add. A touch of olive oil just on the top because these vegetables don't have any oil on them so they want a little bit of fat I'm also gonna hit it with a little bit of salt that was a little bit of salt this time <laughs> that's the chef's version of a little bit <laughs> yeah and then uh, a little bit of cracked pepper All right, so this pie, I think we're gonna put in, we're gonna put in the stone and the oven. Ooh, this, uh, this thing is hot. It's hot, it'll melt your eyebrows, yes. Yeah, well, good news, I have a lot of eyebrow. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And how long are we doing this? So this will probably take like six or seven minutes. So while we're doing this, Robbie, yes. Real quick, how long would they par bake if they were doing the par bake? Par bake, bake it just for like three, I would say like four minutes. And the reason behind that, you don't want, you can get a little bit of color, you don't want a ton. Again, you're just really setting the dough so that way when you cook it the second time, it's not going to get soggy on you. So if it starts to like puff up a little bit, you can have, it starts to like has a little skin on it. You're great. Robbie, All right. no pressure now. This is your time to shine, my man. <laughs> All right, what did you remember? <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, like this? <laughs> Push it down a little bit. Yeah, there you go. Doing great. You have to take that here, right? Yeah. All right. Yeah, exactly right. So I got, you want to make a little, push it out and make a little crust. Mm -hmm. How am I doing? You're doing great. 
Just pure enthusiasm alone, I think you're nailing it. <laughs> I like the finger movement. <laughs> I feel like I'm getting a massage. Uh, you are. One, massage the pizza. Two, massage the ego. <laughs> can I use it like this? Can I, can I do like... Yeah, I think you're doing great. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is the Rob Kraft method. <laughs> uh, Alright, so now I want to start forming my, my crust, right? Yep. Do I flip it at any point? Uh, you can flip it now, yeah. You, that way you kind of maintain how even it is. That's what I was thinking. Maintain well, you're, the, you're, the evenness. Yeah. Maintain low tones. That was a Coneheads reference. Anyone <laughs> I didn't get that one. <laughs> you're, you're flying solo there, Nate. Yeah. Don't worry. <laughs> All right, so can I like, can I lift it up and start doing stuff now? So I would spread <laughs> it a little bit, like put your hand in there and use this other hand as a guide. Okay. So like, ready? It's like this. So like, do a little more flower down. Mm -hmm. Use this hand as a guide, and you're gonna spread it. Oh, just to give it a little head start. Gundaba. So I also did some research uh, on. So the big thing everyone tries to figure out is like what city has the best pizza it's great it's a great like little i don't know it's a great bragging right and a lot of people say that new haven is the home of the best pizza probably the famous one is frank pepe and they're known for their, their clam pizza their white clam pizza which to me sounds fantastic um, but they also he had a brother Sal who opened Sally's a pizza. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's right down the street. And I was trying to I was talking to Gina about this. I'm like, no, there's like a thing of like people call it a pizza rather than pizza. And the reason was it was actually from Italian people coming here and their dialect. It just sounded like a oh. pizza. <laughs> But on the restaurants, they'll actually say, like, a pizza. <laughs> so a lot of people show up, like, this, I guess this really is a pizza place. <laughs> <laughs> I've, got a hole, I've got a hole in mine. Is that one going to go out in there? Uh, no, like, can, uh the last one's going to go Perfect, out. Perfect, because it'll that be way, half that size. Small. Okay. Yes. <laughs> All right. So now, Rob, this is your time. Holes in the middle. Is that bad? No, it's fine. So okay. actually, this is a good point. Holes in the middle. Don't worry about it. Take your dough, fold it on top of itself, yeah. push down. It's actually a good way to make sure you get all of the, the gas bubbles out. Absolutely. <laughs> you, so I did it on purpose. This is gonna be a really nice dough, a uh, really nice crusty crust on this one. Yeah. So this is where you're not gonna start stretching, my man. Okay. All right. So now I do it like this, and I go, I go like this. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, see the Ooh. just the gravity's taking over here. <laughs> I'm taking Nate's words. Oh no, there's holes. So it's, it's all right. Do you see how nervous Roger is at the ceiling? <laughs> <laughs> Doing a great job. Making like a double lantern. <laughs> <laughs> That's so ugly, I don't like this. Alright, I got you. I got you. <laughs> so if everyone don't worry. This can be fixed. We have the technology, we can fix this. So I'm just gonna fold this over on itself, I'm gonna press down, and when I do that, it's gonna save it. I got you, man. Did I not put enough flour on it, or too much flour? No, just, sometimes it just happens. <laughs> it's fine, sometimes it just happens. Now I'm actually gonna flip it over so that way that seals on the other side. And then this is just going to be a smaller little pie. Yeah. 
So next move we're gonna do. Ooh, let's see what we need. All right, we're gonna take this. We're gonna load this one up. All right. All right, ready? Mm -hmm. Ooh, girl, that was good. <laughs> so now I gotta do the test. All right, slides, we're good. So I got your tomato sauce. Okay. I got a spoon for you. All right. So for me with the tomato sauce, I like the, the dollop method. All right. You can either do the thin layer. It's just, hey, this is your pizza. I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do, do like that. Do what she feels right. And um, Nate, it can be both the doughs. They can use all the dough now. Making anything with the so dough I they made and the other dough. Yeah. yeah? This is the Rob style. Did I do a thin layer of tomato sauce? Perfect. Mm -hmm. Okay. What else we got? All right. Now we got bread cheese. The bread cheese. All right. Ooh, ribbons. Beautiful. I don't want. To, I don't want to double up. Perfect. All right. Oh yeah. A little bit of calabrese. Calabrese. Maybe I'll do a smiley face. Okay. Hey, got you. <laughs> Here's some olives. What do you call this pizza? Ah, uh, this is like the Supreme Sal. Oh, okay, okay. Those are too close together. That's better. <laughs> All right. <laughs> and then you, you do a little, dri like a tiny little drizzle of oil on there. All right. So you... there you go. Is that good? Is that yep. enough? That's perfect. All right. All right. And then we're gonna get, we're gonna leave this here for a second because we're gonna wait for this pie in the oven to be ready. The last dough. So, from what I've heard, we have a little surprise for you on this one. <laughs> I might have to make this a little bit smaller. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm going to cut this actually still right in half. And then <laughs> uh, throw this in here real quick. All right. Make a personal pizza. Exactly. So this one is, is hey, this is going to be our little adventure here. <laughs> so we're going to stretch it and we're going to go more classic on this one. So we're going to do a little tomato, some fresh mozzarella. So if you're gonna go for pizza, San Diego, Robbie, where are your spots? I love tribute. I'm glad you said tribute. Right on. We did. We we do a pizza making class with Juan Forchetta, so I always um, like to support them. So hopefully we'll go back to doing that soon. Um, if we can start meeting up soon, but they do the the southern Italian ones where they scorch them. They're they're really good. Uh, plus, I love the atmosphere in South Park at their South Park location. Oh, yeah. Um, I like Mr. Moto, you know, for yeah. Spice. Um, Luigi's. Yeah, I, there's a, there was an article that came out a few years ago on, on a travel magazine or website, whatever they are now, and it said that uh, San Diego had the best pizza in the really? country. Really? Yeah. Does anyone remember that? It was, um, oh God, what was it? It was some... Uh, I don't know, like a Condé Nast or something, but it came out in San Diego, and people just went crazy, all the New Yorkers and <laughs> like Chicago people were pissed off. Ooh. Can you help me? Oh, no. The mushrooms look like uh, sardines. <laughs> oh, that's all right. Uh-oh. All right, so let this guy hang out. Throw 
this guy in. Oh wow. Oh, yes, that please. So amazing. Oh, I Lord. love the charred green onion. Mm -hmm. So good. Perfect. All right. So we're spread this on out real quick. What's your favorite piece of place? You know what? Continue. It's all about what how I'm feeling that day. I uh, love like fancy pie tribute. Mm. If I'm gonna go, if I, it's like Friday, get get out of work, want to hang out. 100%. I'm going to Bronx Pizza. Oh, mm -hmm. I forgot Bronx. Um, but they do a great job. There's a place it's called like. If I'm really feeling sentimental, I'll go to this place called Hoboken Pizza. Mm. And they have, which I love so much, Springsteen memorabilia <laughs> all over the place. I know, it kind of depends on like the neighborhood. If I'm in Mission Hills, I'll hit a Bronx. Yeah. If I'm feeling sentimental, you know what, I, I'll get a Woodstocks. Oh yeah. Because that was the pizza when I was in college at San Diego State. That was the that was the pizza that we got. Woodstock. And there's a Woodstock's down in uh, Pacific Beach. All right, I'm just cutting up oh. mozzarella. So you want to put Ooh. a little bit of sauce on there? Yeah, just a little bit. Yeah, just like a couple dollops here oh, and there. Oh, dollop. I'm sorry. No, you're good. All sorry. right. So then we're gonna take our fresh mozz. This is, uh, is this De Stefano Mott's? It is. So this is a cow's milk Mott's. A little bit of salt. <laughs> got a little mouse on our hands. Yeah. Oh, a little pepper. <laughs> Rob, you want to toss a little bit of that uh, extra virgin on there? Let's do it. And then we're gonna, you guys are going to take a trip outside. Okay. All right. This is a special one. Rob, are you ready? Let's okay. do it. Give me a sec. Same time. I can do it. <laughs> okay. What do we have here? Okay, like don't shove it in yet. This is an uni pizza oven. Oh, can I get the film? Oh my God. So if you can see the uh, flame in there. Mm. Give us just a second. Thanks, Roger. Just won't. Uh, the gimbal. Sorry, people. We're shaking a little bit. Just sit down low now. Give us one second. We're going to show you this beautiful tabletop pizza oven and the flame inside. Oh, yeah. So, Rob, ready to slide it in onto the stone. Close her up. And about two minutes. Right. <laughs> Go grab us some tongs, Rob. And... All right, uh, Rob, maybe some tongs just yeah. to help pull it out of the oven. And it's literally going to take maybe two minutes for this little pellet-driven right. pizza top oven. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and in the meantime, Nate, getting an egg going. And now Rob's going to go back to our pizza oven, Roberto. Yeah. And you want to go turn it maybe in there. Let's see how it's looking. Uh, yep, keep. Oh, that'll be perfect. It's a yeah. little dark. There we go. Good. Yeah, let's and you can see the smoke. Yeah, All so right. we'll just wait another couple minutes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Give it another minute. Nate, what do you got going here? So I started, I took a couple of our tomatoes and I'm just slicing them in half. I also took our arugula and I just put it in a bowl. So I'm just gonna season this arugula, a little bit of lemon juice, salt, pepper. Perfect. And again, a little bit little of olive oil. A little olive oil. Okay, we're gonna check in with Roberto and the pizza oven. Yeah, it's like you're filming a tennis match. <laughs> <laughs> A little clunky, but it's kind of fun. We had to do it. 
Shall I pull it? Uh, take a look. Is it getting darker? Might have to spin it again. Actually, let me grab me pull. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's getting there. Should I wait another minute? Yeah, because it doesn't look quite done, right? Yeah. Yeah, you can tell by the look of it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh -huh. Oh, I see. Yeah. So we're going to go take another check. Roberto's checking the uh, flames. Oh, lift it up again, Rob. So if you can see everybody, the flames in the back, I'll try to get in there. Almost, come on. There they are, oh yeah. This is the closest thing we can get to an 800 degree oven <laughs> in downtown. <laughs> okay, try to spin it. Let's see if it's dark on that inside. Oh, it's getting there. I can see the mozzarella melting. It's starting to get bubbly. Oh yeah, it's starting to bubble. It's a little dark to see it on the screen, but when he pulls it out, it will be fantastico. Oh, you're almost there, Rob. One more 30 seconds. Should I close it? Shut the door. Okay. What would you else would you like to say about pizza, Rob? It's really delicious. It's really yummy. <laughs> and San Diego is beautiful. Look, <laughs> and, at our, look at our city. Right? And making pizza. <laughs> <laughs> hey, the best pizza city in, in the uh, country. Right? At least we were voted by the, whatever magazine that was. Awesome. <laughs> okay, Rob, I think that's going to be right. done. Let's pull it out. Slide, this under. slide it under. Oh. Nope. <laughs> it's kind of hard. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you going to get a job at a pizzeria quite soon? <laughs> oh, yeah. Look at that, baby. Oh, I like the look of that. Look at the crust. Oh, did yeah. Did you press this? Who did this? Nice. All right, people. Your boy, Robert G. Uh-huh. Roberto G. What do you think, Nate? Oh, Robbie, you Am I hired? You're for the day. It's like when you go on a plane and get those wings. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Robbie, you want to cut it? Yeah. Take a little bit of those tomatoes, a little bit of lemon juice, a little bit of olive oil, salt and pepper. Mm. I'm just gonna put that right on top. That's the perfect simple pie right there. Oh, and, if, yeah. and if you're feeling frisky, we don't do it on everyone, but touch this aged balsamic. Ooh. Just a little bit. Oh god. <laughs> All right. Oh boy. All right, Rob. Time to eat? Time to eat your masterpiece. <laughs> what do we think? Do you get the char on there? Mm. I hope. Oh yeah. That's amazing. Alright. Perfectly cooked. Is it chewy crust? Yeah. Well done me. Well done me. Hey. And me. I didn't do anything. <laughs> that was all you. <laughs> Alright, let me steal this from you. <laughs> Alright, so we got our quadrello pie. So what I'm going to do with this is I'm just going to cut this. And you can just hear it on the this tray. Crunching. How nice it is. I know I get hot. Yeah, like a too big of a pizza for this little guy, but things life could be worse. <laughs> All right, let's do that. Perfect. So you might think, hey Nate, this looks great. You know what? You're right, it does look good. <laughs> well, let's make it a little bit better. So I have that arugula. I'm gonna put that arugula right on top. And you're probably thinking to yourself, oh dear gosh, we've done it again. 
<laughs> I'm going to take it a little step further. What I'm else gonna... could you possibly do to this perfect... Oh, oh my gosh. <laughs> so we're going to go egg on top. <laughs> and then you're saying, well, this is complete. We're done, right? Nope. Nope. Oh. I'm going to take your mall <laughs> turno. you got to be kidding me. And we're just going to do mall turno. Amazing. Oh yeah, you gotta get a close up of that, Gina. Uh huh. Oh my, oh my, oh my, oh my. Perfectly oh cooked my. egg. Oh dear. Stop. <laughs> too bad you're too full from the other one, Rob. Eat it, Gina. And here oh. is our final pie. Ooh, look at that one. The Supreme. The Supreme. I love that sound. Yeah. <laughs> and what we're gonna do is, oh, where'd I put it? Oh, yeah. Oh, this is the honey one? This is gonna be the honey Ooh. one. Ooh, that's fun. It's spicy and look at that. sweet. You see that? Oof, look at the how it bubbled up on the edges. Like a mm, see, Dutch a, pancake. That's a perfect crust. Is that the one I made? This is the one you made. Yeah, well, there you go. Yeah, Rob's got that Mary Poppin quality to him. <laughs> Practically perfect in every way. <laughs> All right. Midas touch. And then I'm just gonna mix this up real quick. And this is where we're gonna do this infamous hot honey. This is a Colorado. Gene, you're from Colorado. Yeah, had Colorado this pizza. Room? Oh yeah, honey on the crust. They send out the tub of honey every time. Bojo's you pizza. Uh -huh. Idaho Springs. The mile high pizza. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Okay. Whoa. Seriously, Nate. Oh. Pizza number three. Ooh, set that other one over here, Rob. Wow. All right, team. We've done it. Team pizza. I think nobody's asking questions. Everyone's topping and baking <laughs> and cooking. Hopefully, drinking some wine or beer, whatever yeah, you got. Yeah, mine. <laughs> right. <laughs> Oh, awesome, boy. Gentlemen, awesome. <laughs> Thanks. See if there's any last yeah. questions. Yeah. yeah, we'll see if there's any questions. But uh, uh, in the meantime, thank you, Nate. Uh, As no always, problem. dinner is served. So now the <laughs> even more fun part, which is going to be us eating <laughs> and laughing some more. Yeah. But uh, thank you so much for, for joining us for this uh, Sunday supper, supper Sunday. What's next on the... Oh, we're still in the works on this one. There's some there's some ideas being thrown around. Probably in the next probably after we eat this pizza, we're gonna figure this out. Yeah, we have some we have some ideas. So yeah. we, we will be uh, we will be announcing it soon. Yeah, you guys are cool with breaking out whole pigs, right? Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that should be fun. We'll have Roger deliver everyone a live one. <laughs> Just make cow. sure it's fresh. <laughs> the uh, Wednesday uh, Wino Wednesday, we are doing Merlot. Merlot. We might mm -hmm. talk about Sideways a little bit. Mm -hmm. I have to watch that movie to refresh myself. Ooh, the old Giamatti. Yeah. <laughs> Miles, what's the name of the movie? Miles something or other? Yeah. It's, uh, <laughs> well, I'll tell you on Wednesday. <laughs> what else is coming up? Do you know anything good? Uh, Wednesday. Uh, first Friday plate is going to be Sharky. Mm, don't remember what it's going to be. No, Pickle Things. Pickle Ooh. Things. Mm -hmm. Ooh, I heard there's, there's a really fun... Pickle brand mm -hmm, that's going to mm -hmm. be there. So that'll be <laughs> there in a second. Yeah. Tickled just thinking about it. You're tickled thinking about the, pickle. the pickles. Yeah. <laughs> yes. But we'll start with the Merlot. But then we'll have Nate. Um, we've got good, good ideas. Pasta, yeah. sausage, who knows? There's lots of stuff coming up. As you guys yeah. know, Just uh, we, we post them on uh, the events page on our website. But uh, thank you so much for being here as always. Hope you learned something. Most importantly, we hope you had fun because uh, we always have so much fun here. Thanks, oh, yeah. Nate. Hey. You are the man. I try my, my damnedest. Everybody's <laughs> too busy eating. You know, what they, you know what they call a pizza maker? A pizzaioli. Oh, uh, yeah? Uh-huh. So you're, my, you're our pizzaioli. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know you were bilingual. 